One of the most important guitar pedal brands in history is without a doubt Ibanez. And today I'm gonna to show you my favorite Ibanez pedals. Before I show you my favorite Ibanez pedals, I do wanna mention the sweet guitar that I'm playing. It is a CME Gibson exclusive. This one's pink, tortoise pick guard. Um, this Mother Mary cat strap was also in use. It's very thick fabric. It, uh, it makes the tone resonate uh, a lot better. I just want you to go check these out. There's a link down in the description. Do that maybe after the episode or during, it's really up to you. My first of the favorite Ibanez pedals comes from 1974. It is the Ibanez Overdrive. It has three knobs. It's in the thin line case that came way before the eight series. And it's not really an overdrive because it is a clone of a 70s big muff. I don't know why they call it overdrive, but it is what it is and it sounds really, really good. So you need to listen to it. Next up is the DE7 from the Tone Lock series because how many times have you turned a knob and then someone else turns the knob? Well, in this case, you just lock the knobs in. And this thing is awesome. It is a digital delay. It has an echo and delay setting. I like the echo because it's kind of based around a darker tape-ish sound. Really clean and precise repeats. I like this for dotted eighth rhythmic delays and a lot of people have. It's very, very famous on certain pedal boards over the years. So snatch one of these up while you still can. Next is the Model 59 Standard Fuzz. It came out in 1974 along with that Ibanez Overdrive you saw. This is definitely not a big muff fuzz. It is based around the really rare and amazing Univox Super Fuzz. And when I say based upon, it's pretty much a direct clone. There's other enclosures for the Super Fuzz, like this Superman enclosure, they call it. It's made famous by the Who, gobs of other people, but this Ibanez Standard Fuzz is made famous by the Black Keys. I'm a big fan of this pedal because it sounds awesome. It's a little more accessible than the original Super Fuzzes, and it has sliders. Because you can have knobs or you can have sliders, and I think when it comes down to that decision, we're all gonna choose sliders. It's made in Japan like a lot of their stuff was back then, and some still is, and um, it's great. It's a standard fuzz. pedal comes from my absolute favorite Ibanez series ever. I could prove it. I'm not going to do it in this episode, but here it is. It's the Session Man SS10. There is a Session Man 2. It's great. I don't want to talk about it. Just go find it or something. I'll talk about it later. But the SS10 is where they took some pedals and combined them and gave you series in parallel. So this particular unit has the Fat Cat Distortion, which is a Proco Rat clone in it. And then it has the chorus. This is a stereo chorus, this is mono, but it's the same chorus circuit. And what you have is the ability to have the chorus and the rat distortion on. You can use parallel series, it's really cool. If you pop the battery compartment, get your screwdriver out, there's some trim pots in there for the speed and I think the effect level. Yeah, I can't close that, it's old, it's fine. There we go. And uh, you need to hear it because it's really, really cool. Next 
Ibanez FL9. You've heard of the TS9. Well, believe it or not, there were other effects in that series. F stands for flanger, so this is the flanger number nine. These came out in the early 80s. It's really, really great, and as you've heard me say a million times, I love flanger as a chorus, so I'm gonna do a little bit of that for you right now. Next up is the OT-10 Octave, that's part of that 10 series from 86 through 89. It's an all analog octave pedal. Um, effect is kind of how much octave is there. Edge is this high end octave with a little bit of dirt and the dry signal is obviously your clean guitar. It's quirky, it's weird, it's almost unusable, but when it is usable, it's super awesome. The Ibanez AD80. This came out in 1979 as part of the 8 series, which the TS-808 was a part of. And most of those effects, now that we're way into the future or that's in our past, have been overshadowed by the famous Tube Screamer. But this is amazing. Later we have the AD9, the Boss DM2 comes out. But this was a kind of pre-runner with the Memory Man into analog delay bucket brigade device echo. It runs at 18 volts. They're getting really, really rare, but it has a really great and almost magical, mysterious delay sound. It does some things in the repeats and the way that the blend circuit works is really, really cool. Uh, a really funny story is one of my employees here, Cliff, he had this, bought it new, I think, back in the day, and had it thrown in the bottom of a box in his closet, and one day he says, would you want this pedal? And I said, yes, I'll take that pedal. So it has a story, and every pedal with a story is worth playing. Let's play this pedal. Distortion, MOSFET distortion pedal from that 10 series again. The color scheme alone is enough for me to like this pedal. It could basically do nothing and I would like it. Um, it is particularly interesting because in the age that this came out, MOSFET was kind of a, it wasn't a thing people talked about. We have seen trends in boutique pedals where MOSFET is almost a buzzword or it's a misunderstood way of amplifying, but this uses a chip in it that's a MOSFET amplifier and it's just a really great amp tube-like pedal. That's, uh, that's something you hear a lot. It's something that people claim and it is a buzz phrase, tube-like, but this really does have it, a full bass, middle, treble, tone stack. It's great. I love the high gain sounds, which I'm gonna demo, but it does low gain really, really well also.
<laughs> you might be thinking, well, Josh, what about the tube screamer? You've kind of mentioned it a couple times with these other circuits, but are you going to show us your favorite tube screamer? And to be honest, it's not one of my favorite circuits by Ibanez, and it's not even one of my favorite pedals. I respect the tube screamer, and I love it for its history, its importance, and I think it is a great circuit. I've built pedals based around it, and I enjoy those pedals. But when it comes to Ibanez, they have a lot more to offer, in my opinion, through their creativity and other designs over the decades. If I had to choose one that Ibanez made, though, it would be this limited color lime green TS7. I actually have the box, the plastic, and all the goodies, and to me that's exciting because it's green, it's super limited, and it sounds like a tube screamer, so I don't even have to play it, and it makes this video easier. We're just going to look at it for a second, we're going to cut to the next scene, and you all know what a tube screamer sounds like. You can just remember it from the tens of thousands of demos you've heard over the years. Today's record time is brought to you by John Coltrane's 1958 release, Blue Train. This is the first ever jazz record that I listened to and fell in love with. I had heard some jazz things and honestly a lot of it kind of annoyed me or I didn't understand it, but this really grew on me. I had to listen to it a few times and then I really began to appreciate it. I'm showing it because as guitar players, we love to stick close to guitar and to the genres that keep guitar you know, close and center into all the arrangements. This is something that does not care about guitar and I think it's really healthy as musicians to listen to music that gets us outside of our box. Coltrane is really interesting. He's fascinating. I think he's a musical genius. And a lot of guitarists will even listen to this record and try to replicate note for note all of his lines. And I wouldn't even try to do that. I'm not that good. But it's a fascinating study in how different instruments will push music in different ways. If you're not into jazz and you've never even tried, I would suggest this. Uh, it's a hard listen at first, but you grow on it. it. It becomes something you appreciate. And I would check out the Blue Note record label, which did a lot of these records in this era. My favorite track is Blue Train, track one, and I really love the drumming by Joe Jones. He's on a lot of other records on this label as well. Check it out in the comments. Let me know what you think. And if you are into jazz, drop some of your favorite albums down there as well. Thanks so much for watching this episode. I would love in the comments below if you tell me your favorite Ibanez pedal. We've all owned Ibanez stuff and I'm sure that a lot of you guys are rocking something on your board right now. So let's do that. Also, I want to fill you in on the fact that we are really excited because we have begun working on a JHS show specific website. It's going to have merch you won't find anywhere else, tech articles, I'm getting friends involved. It's all kinds of cool stuff and I'm super excited. We're also going to launch alongside that a Patreon account so you guys can get involved in what we're doing and get extra content that's going to be really, really fun. I'm excited about both these things. We're creating them now, but just stand by, watch episodes, and we're going to let you know when we do release it and even give you some better warning right up until the date. Now, if you like this episode, hit like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon to get notifications of future episodes. And until next time, just go play your Ibanez pedals and have a wonderful day.